Fragrance's position as a discretionary category has meant that it's been among the weakest performing categories within beauty and personal care over 2008 and 2009. And its performance has been dragged down by poor performances in mature regions like North America and Western Europe where the recession had a, a bigger impact. Companies in the premium end are trying to restore brand value by launching products in the very exclusive ranges. During fragrances market boom, there were frequent launches, price discounts, price promotion. This kind of took away the exclusivity of fragrances, leaving some consumers apathetic to this product. So premium companies are now trying to restore that exclusivity by ranging products which are very expensive. An example is an extension of Jador, which was launched for 700 pounds. And then another example is Michael Kors Solid Perfume Ring, which is again is a very expensive brand only sold in Harrods. These launches did not help to increase market share, but the objective was not to increase market share, but to restore brand value, which I think these launches have successfully done. So this reduced revenue coming into the fragrance industry has meant less money to, for fragrance manufacturers to be able to spend on things like advertising and marketing. And actually it's had a knock-on impact on the types of launches that we've seen in the fragrance industry. So predominantly during the recession and beyond, the fragrance launches that we've seen have been mostly celebrity launches. So just to give an example of a recent celebrity launch, that would be um, something like Beyonce, which is um, a new fragrance that's just been launched in 2010 in the US. Um, an example of a brand extension would be something like Calvin Klein's uh, CK1 Summer Edition. Limited editions have been um, another popular um, tactic used by manufacturers throughout the recession. The next question is, what are they doing in terms of existing brands, brands which are existing in the market? Here, the strategies are more streamlined. Companies are investing behind brands which have proved to be successful rather than divesting their investment across a number of different brands, which we saw previously during fragrances market boom. One example is LVMH is launching behind Christine Dior Sherry because it is a successful brand. It's been quite successful in the US. So just to illustrate the point of brand extensions not necessarily generating more sales, the JLo brand in the US has actually been seeing a year-on-year -year decline, despite a significant number of brand extensions being launched since 2002 when the JLo brand first came on the scene. And actually, these haven't resulted in an increase in brand share. And actually, there have been suggestions from within the industry that this vast number of new celebrity and brand extension launches are actually damaging um, the industry as a whole because consumers are becoming confused by the sheer number of launches and sheer number of fragrances available that arguably um, buying fragrance now no, no longer feels so special and it's contributing to this consumer apathy that's potentially damaging to the industry. Another thing which companies are doing is trying to diversify globally. Russia and China will be leading growth in fragrances although growth in fragrances will not be as much as some of the other categories. The big names, the big brands are all present in these markets and they're launching products as per consumer preferences. While they are trying to cope with the market situation in the fragrances industry, they're also trying to diversify into other categories. For example, color cosmetics and skincare. Elizabeth Arden is investing behind its well-known skincare brand Privage, whereas Coat is investing behind Color Cosmetics. It has tied in the famous German supermodel Heidi Klum to be its brand director, as well as the brand face for its Color Cosmetics brand Astor. Between 2007 and 2009, fragrances as a percentage of total revenue for Chanel declined from 52% to 15%, while during the same time, Color cosmetics revenue increased from 35% to 36%. So you can see here that some of the companies are trying to diversify into other categories. So one way in which 
manufacturers are trying to fight back against this market saturation and consumer apathy towards fragrances is by tapping into new media, by using things like mobile phone apps. Um, the company Giovedan has recently launched the iPerfumer app. And this is where consumers can actually go onto their mobile phone, um, enter the names of brands which they know they already like, or enter types of scents which they know they already like. And on the basis of this, the app will actually recommend new fragrances and new brands which they might like to try. In the end, the question is, what is the ideal situation to go forward in this struggling market? One, it is a market that cannot be overlooked, particularly for some companies such as LVMH who derive a large portion of their revenue from fragrances. So they have to rely on inno innovative marketing strategies such as smaller pack sizes. And they also need to invest more behind marketing and advertising because a great part of the appeal of these products lie in their marketing activities. While they do this, they need to diversify regionally and also spread across other categories which provide better growth opportunities.